Well, everyone, once again, Crazy Camper right here. Please subscribe right up there if you have not yet so you don't miss anything. I also have a channel called Ontario Parks. But anyways, I'm obviously here to review episode 2 of Alone on season 2. I love the fact that lots of people comment on my previous review of episode 1. So I'm going to continue to do it every single week. Hopefully get out by Sunday, which I'm doing right now. But yeah, Green Brew Earth started off commenting the last episode. He's a good buddy of mine, so that's his channel right there. And also, we had Les Dempsey comment, who also lives in Ontario, near me. He camps solo. We had Jock Campbell comment, and Billy Copesale, who commented and provided some excellent insight. But we have lots to talk about, so let's just look at the rankings right away. Here we go. Number nine, Mary Kate. Eight, Randy Champagne. Now seven and six, we still haven't met Nicole or Jose. So they're probably gonna be in the mix around there. So I'm gonna leave them somewhere in there. We got Larry Robertson five, Tracy Wilson in four, Davis McTeary in three, Justin Vito in two, and Mike Lowe in number one. So just like the first review, I'll start from bottom of the top. So we'll look at number nine, who is Mary Kate. So I ranked her nine because she obviously got injured, but let's talk about how she started off with this episode. So we saw her starting off on day three. She missed her daughters, which I knew was going to happen. However, she got right to work and she started making a fire shelter area with a notch and a tree. And then she also made a door for her own shelter. But she has the tarp shelter over the log. And I'm wondering, what's the best shelter to make out there? Because Alan crawled in a shelter he made like a bear. And he also had fire in there. When Sam, we're talking about season one now. When Sam had, he had his tarp shelter, canvas over some wood. And it would flap in the rain. And that would drive me nuts. So ideally, I'd like to see guys make... A shelter with fire and like Lucas did on season one as well but anyways so day seven she had her accident I was very impressed on how she made that shelter she was drying out and processing firewood that'd be a big asset when the rain hits for days on end especially the wind into December but she was chopping as she held her piece of wood I'm not a survival expert but I have made probably over a thousand fires since the age of 10. I've lived in two homes with wood burning fireplaces. I have a chimney in the backyard. I go camping, I go cottaging, and I have never ever held the piece of wood as I swing an ax at it. I either lean it up, or if it's too, can't lean up, I'll lay it on the side. And so she smacked her hand in between the thumb and the first index finger here. So it looked like she hit it right around here, but she repeated three times in a, in a row. I can't lift my thumb. I can't lift my thumb. So I'm wondering, if she severed or even nicked the tendon that connects the muscle that controls your thumb so I think she's got to be out she's probably gonna call call it quits tap out right away so that really sucks she's actually growing on me as a character too but on to number eight so rank number eight Randy Champlain what he bring to Vancouver Island? He brought a minus 20 degree sleeping bag, handmade bow with six arrows, which we'll talk about in a second. Most of them brought similar stuff. But he seems to have a good fire area set up inside a shelter. But he wants to rely hunting on the land, which if you watch season one, the majority of the food comes from the sea. But I was impressed that he built that deadfall trap, which had 20 to 30 pounds of force. Who knows what that could have caught? Apparently it went off, but there was no animal in it. And he lost his ferrule rod into the fire. Now, Jock Campbell suggested on the previous comments that why don't you tie your ferrule rod to your knife or something else so you don't lose it, but that would have disintegrated in the fire. I know on season one, Joe Robinette lost his ferrule rod, and that was the end of him. So my question for everyone else is, can he make a bow drill out there? I know it's the start of the episode. They showed the scene of him trying it. So obviously he's going to try it. 
but what would be your best bet to do that? Fashion the items, maybe keep them close to your body, under clothes to dry it out, and then in time of need, you make your fire. So I think he's going to be number eight. He might be out soon. But skipping ahead down to number five, I'm going to put Larry Roberts there. Now I'm moving behind Tracy because the next time alone you see him still struggling trying to find a spot. You see him on a level ground again. He doesn't have that nice beach area where he can fish and find seafood. And I think he just got the worst area possible even out of the, well at least out of the 8 of the 10 we've seen so far. So we'll see what he does next episode. And then on number 4, I'm going to put Tracy there. Because there is a photo of her with a big shelter. I know I don't like to see what happens next or little leaks of information, but there's a photo of her with a nice shelter. Take a look at that. And the uh, other fact is, yeah, she weighs 375 pounds. Although a guy named Billy Copso told me that even if you weigh that much, you have that much fat, if you're not taking in carbs, your body's going to disintegrate muscle, it will cannibalize muscle to fuel your body as well as fat at the same time. So it's not still a long term survival method of just relying on fat. But if she ate a lot of bulk help, then she might be all right. She can use her fat that way. But yeah, uh, next episode, they showed her scaring off bears with her compressed air horn. Looks like they're right at her tank because I think she filmed one. So that's pretty interesting. But moving on to number three, we have David McTyrian. What did he bring? Okay, zero degree sleeping bag. I'm still wearing the sleeping bags. Why not just bring the best one possible? Do they want to spend the money on it or can you dry it out easier? Uh, yeah, I don't know. But he's trained and taught a lot of skills in the Appalachian Mountains. And I've hiked there actually, and it's a pretty rugged place. So hopefully he knows what he's doing. My first thought of him was positive. On a side note, I found it kind of funny that he said, why do I always look angry? And you know what? He does look mad. You look at his photo. Seems kind of mad. Uh, I guess he kind of takes the complexion of a resting bee face for the woman on the male version. So, but anyways, he has three kids at home. They're raged from age of 14 to in their 20s so and he's divorced too so he has really nothing to go home for he's also a religious man so religion helps you in hope and time of need so that might be an asset for him but what spot is he at here we haven't even seen his tent or his shelter i mean but he's still on a level beach cove where he's gonna catch fly he threw his hooks in and his bait got taken and just full of seaweed so he has to really catch some fish hello i saw he caught one Looks like a bottom feeder or some sort of sucker that he got. They showed that on the first part of the episode starting in. So that could be a big asset for him. Okay, rank number two, I got Justin Vito. What did he bring? Down sleeping bag with sleeves. Nylon net hammock. I wonder if he can use that for fishing. Two emergency rations. Now he's a military man and Jock Campbell explained on episode one review that these military men are trained just to go 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 but at what point do you stop relax look at your surroundings survivor man versus bear grill survivor man he takes his time and thinks everything out when bear grill just rush rush rushes so hopefully he uses his still training to get through this ordeal but he seems calm he's on the beach he has a very good spot he found a duck swimming around and he thought, I'm going to save that food source for later. You know, if you go butchering animals, they're all going to get scared and everyone's going to, they're all going to run away. So he wanted to save that duck for later. And then he found that duck dead. And what he did, he threw it out into a bay because he didn't want to eat it in case it made him sick. But wouldn't you want to do an autopsy on it? Maybe check to see if it choked on a piece of plastic or some sort of other garbage. Uh, there was a tsunami in Japan a bunch of years ago and stuff is still washing up on the, the west coast. From that tsunami so that duck could have just choked on something and died why was it healthy one day and dead the next so i think you really should have cut it open and investigated because that that's a few thousand calories right there that could prolong his time there for two to three days so i think he lost a big opportunity there 
but I'm still keeping uh, him at rank number two. We still haven't seen his camp yet, so hopefully we see a lot more of him. But ranked number one, we got Mike Lowe. He's 55 years old. He's the oldest competitor on the show, but he has excellent training, and he is training the Air Force to survive as well. He brought similar stuff as everyone else. Not much to say there. Zero degree sleeping bag. Again, with the sleeping bag, let's put that. Why not just bring the minus 40 to emergency rations? So right now it's a no-brainer to put him as number one. Because he's calm, collective. He's eating his edibles from the sea. And he's also catching fish. On day six, he caught three fish. And he had the mindset to eat one. He cooked it up, ate one. And then he buried the other two. And he also put seaweed over top of it to not only preserve it, but stop the smell from any predators that might just dig it up. But we still haven't really seen his camp, but I do like how he's on his nice slope beach so he can read the tides and go in and out, which people like Larry Roberts, they, they just don't have that, that nice spot to survive on. So I'm looking forward to see how he goes. Hopefully he can surpass Alan's 40 something days. But yeah, that's all I have to talk to you about right now. Uh, please subscribe. And like and talk. I want to get the conversation going again. Keep the comments coming. Let's see what happens until next week. Bye bye.